G'day Dave here and we're looking at Philippians chapter 2 verses 12 and 13. Two verses, uh, two verses that we need to understand in their context, what's gone before, where they're headed and two verses that stand out as really profoundly summing up how you go about living the Christian life. And uh, what I want us to see as we explore these verses is that we have enormous reason to be encouraged. Uh, if we've begun as a Christian to keep going, to work hard at being Christian uh, and to live that out because we've got great confidence that God is doing something profound in us. And it helps us to answer too the question about whether it is God's work or whether it's our work. I mean, you start as a Christian and we've seen that that's all God's work. We start with God's grace. It's all the work of Jesus Christ. It's all his kindness. Does it start with God's grace and then continue with our works? Uh, does it move on from God's work to our work? Or is it a, a part uh, God and part me? And, and how is the balance to be worked out? Is there some kind of synergy at work? Let's uh, have a look at what he has to say, because it's really important that we grasp not only how to become a Christian, but how to live as God's children. So pick it up at verse 12, chapter 2. Therefore, my dear friends, he's got a special relationship with them, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Um, now see how it fits in the context, first of all. Uh, it begins with therefore. You know what happens when you see a therefore? You ask what the therefore is there for. It's pointing backwards. Uh, and what's it looking back at? At the fact that we've been encouraged to humility because God has done it all for us. We have everything in abundance from God if we've become Christians. And because Jesus has demonstrated what true humility looks like, putting others before himself that they might be saved. And God has honoured him in that so that he is now number one. And in the light of that, we are encouraged to live out our Christian lives with that in mind. What will that look like? Well, a couple of things to observe. First of all, it is consistent. Uh, Paul says they've lived this way. They've been obedient to God when he was with them and even more when he's not with them. That is, they haven't just put on a show. Uh, they've been living out their Christian life when he's present, when he's not present, in view of him, in absence from him. They're consistent. Uh, we see also that they've worked at it. Uh, he says, as you've always obeyed, uh, continue to work out your salvation. It's a strong word for work. It's labor at your salvation, hard work uh, at your salvation. Um, what you see is a picture of maybe a, a football team with a heavy, hard pre-season. What you see on a work site of, of people labouring from the early hours of the morning uh, until late in the day to get the job done. Maybe what we've seen in terms of the, the hard work of medicos on the front line in this time of the pandemic. This is a serious effort in living out the Christian life. And to do that with fear and fear. And with trembling, um, there's, an, there's a recognition here that um, it's not our entitlement. It's not any uh, special achievement of our own. This is but for the grace of God go I. This is only God's work. So not to be proud, uh, but to be humble, thanking God for what he has done. And, and living that out, working hard at the Christian life. Now, notice the specific language that's said here. It says, to work out your salvation. Now, this is where we need to see clearly what's being said, because the great misunderstanding, I think, especially in Australia, uh, of what Christians are on about is that people think we are working for our salvation. That is, they think that we think that if we work hard enough, we do enough religious stuff, we do enough good stuff, we're, we're living the life God wants us to live to such a degree, then we will be saved. In other words, we earn our salvation. Now that's self-righteousness. And we'll see again in Philippians that it's not about self-righteousness. It's about God-given righteousness. It's not what we do for God. It's what God has done for us in Jesus. So it can't be working for our salvation. 
to work out our salvation, I take it, is to work out the implications of what it is to be saved. That is, you've been saved for a purpose. Live that out. Do the very things that God has saved you to do. To live this way, to go this way, to have this attitude, to speak this way, to love people this way, to be united in this manner, to work hard at your good deeds and so forth. Now, does that mean that the Christian life is all up to us? That it's all my hard work? It starts with Jesus, but it'll be my hard work that keeps me going to the very end. No. We need to hold verse 12 together with verse 13. Uh, these are verses that add both sides of one true reality. And that reality is seen also through, through a different lens, verse 13, for it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. You, you see that? So we work hard, the Christian works hard uh, at, at living out their salvation, at, at living as a citizen of heaven, at, at working out the implications of their Christian life. They work hard at it for God is at work in them. Um, I, I can't pat myself on the back for my hard work, but I can point to God and say thank you. Thank you for being at work within me uh, to enable me to work hard as a follower of Jesus, to enable me to be obedient to your word, to enable me to show humility to others, to enable me to put others before myself, to recognize the unity that we have, to be caring and considerate and gentle and kind, to, to actually put your word into practice. Thanks for enabling me to do that. And, and notice the way that he enables two things. For it is God who works in you to will and to act. To will and to act, both things have to go together, don't they? Because we might will to do something, we might really want to lose weight, right? We might have a desperate desire to drop 10 kilos, but will is not enough. No, we need to act. We, we need to follow through on that, that changed eating uh, routine, that changed exercise routine, that better diet and, and so forth. We actually need to do something. And it's not enough just to do something, is it? You've, you've got to generate that by the will to do it. So God is at work at both the transformation of our minds, our will, and at the level of how it works itself out in practice the doing, to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Friends, the Christian life is, is a long distance race. I, I sometimes think of the image of the Tour de France. Um, it's an extraordinary race. It goes over three weeks. It goes over thousands of kilometres. That is a long distance haul. It's not simply a sprint. Um, it, it's not like the velodrome where you get on and you and you go flat out for a thousand meters and then you stop and it's all over. It's a long race. And it's a race that has some serious uphill climbs. It's a race that has some dangerous downhill, windy, um, fast sections. It's a race that includes sprints at times and serious competition and struggling uphill and, and downhill and some long, tedious times along the flat, sometimes without the support of those around us, sometimes with strong headwinds or crosswinds, and sometimes with the difficulties of punctures and, and warped wheels and other things breaking and going wrong. Friends, the Christian life is a marathon. It's a long distance ultra marathon. And it's got all kinds of, of obstacles and pressures and temptations and threats and struggles along the way. So work hard at living out what it is to be Christian and thank God that he's at work in you to enable you to do that. And remember back in, in chapter 1, Paul was confident that God began the good work in them and would continue it on to completion until the day of Christ. So it's not an if, it's a when. But in the light of that when, we are to work out the implications of our salvation day by day in whatever circumstances come our way.
knowing that we have all the resources of God to do that. What a comfort that is and what a challenge. So we should be people who pray, asking for God's help to live out this life in relationship with him.